Hey everybody, it's Nick Olson back again, and today I want to give you guys a walkthrough of our Chupacabra off-road branded enclosed trailer. If you guys follow the channel and know anything about us, you know we're a UTV products brand, so that requires us selling our products at trade shows, promoting our brand, whether we're racing, we're out in the dunes, kids toys, bikes, you guys know we're all things dirt. We love it, and we needed a solution for everything. So we'll go ahead and give you guys a walkthrough of the enclosed trailer. All right guys, so starting off with the trailer, this is a 26 foot enclosed. The brand is called Easy Hauler, and that is more of the value brand from Mission Trailers. So you may or may not have heard of Mission. They make quality aluminum trailers. And that was really one of the elements that I first decided to choose was choose a lightweight trailer because I've got a Ford EcoBoost. If you guys have been following the channel, you're interested in seeing how this thing toes uh, when it's being towed by my f-150 we have a video about that but i haven't upgraded to the big bad diesel roller yet like most of you probably soon but either way having a trailer that's really light makes things really nice and uh, coming off of a cheaper enclosed trailer this thing tows significantly better than my old uh, regular lower price point heavy enclosed uh, towed so this thing is about 2900 pounds dry again it's 26 feet and you're roughly about 30 feet by the time you add in a four foot tow hitch i shopped hard i was really looking for a reasonable price this does have cabinets inside we'll show you the inside here in just a second i ended up buying this almost two years ago at a big text dealer in southern california in beaumont it was better pricing that i I found anywhere in Arizona. So I made the quick drive, hooked up the trailer and brought the sucker home. I think it was around $17,000 roughly when I bought it. So for some reason, this thing didn't get bought at the end of a big Christmas selling rush. I picked it up in January and it's worked out really well for us. One of the elements I really like about it are the axles being split. You guys tow, especially in California, just getting in and out of a lot of these gas stations, you're gonna drag the bed, you're gonna drag the, the hitch. It's very difficult to have a nice trailer and keep it from getting drug in the bottom, going in and out of these spots, depending on where you're traveling take you so this split axle setup really helps a ton with getting in and out of up and down situations the toe is really nice as well because of that so noticeable improvement just by picking a trailer with this setup i highly encourage that if you can find one of those and uh really works well so another reason maybe why this didn't get sold right away is that it isn't really tall so i was a little nervous would this fit a future side by side at the time i bought this i only had my race car the race car is very low it's even lower than a stock x3 nothing to worry about right well i was thinking if i had purchased another car probably a four seat turbo s and lo and behold i end up winning one a few months later and now i own a turbo 4s on 33 inch tires with a roof rack well the good news is the height of this trailer does allow for that and that's probably one of the tallest side by sides on the market i'd say it probably just barely fit even if i did upgrade to 35 inch tires so Probably not gonna work for you mutter boys down south, but for all of us in the southwest in the desert, it's basically tall enough for any side-by-side -side any of us would consider owning. So I get the trailer. The trailer is all blacked out. It's got some nice aluminum wheels. Um, picked up a spare tire for it as well. And of course we had to brand this thing. So if you're looking at this wrap, we've gotten a ton of compliments. The trailer was wrapped by Wolf Designs, local business here in Chandler. John and Amy do really nice work. They've wrapped my race car, they've wrapped Andrew's Turbo Twin, they've wrapped my buddy Carl's X3, and they've even wrapped Wes Leffler's car. So we like them, obviously, we trust them, we like the work that they do, and really it's been ironic, they matched up our teal so nicely that we've called on Amy and the team at Wolf to make sure when we get wrapped for our future display, stuff like that, that we match this teal. So this is really the teal that we've kind of built the brand around. Sounds a little trivial, but when you're trying to build a brand, keeping that consistency is very important. And now I know why very few companies have started with a teal logo, because it's incredibly difficult to match so they did a good job uh, they helped co-design the wrap just with some inspiration i love how it turned out and the wraps held up pretty good so far we've had a couple little instances where it might start to peel off a little bit but another thing too when i purchased this with the wrap is i knew in arizona we have to have this thing enclosed at all times i didn't want this thing baking in the arizona sun so this sits in a storage unit when it is not in use and we've got almost two full years out of the wrap and the wrap still looks really good so really happy that let's go and show you guys inside what we've done to make this thing the workhorse so we can use it for everything come on in haley show you why we need it for everything, what some of the basic thoughts were. So like I said, this thing came with cabinets up top and on the bottom. The bottom cabinets, unfortunately, I had to remove because now that I do own the Turbo S and I do own the race car, there's been times when I've had to transport both cars. And believe it or not, both cars fit by, I mean, we're talking the skin of your teeth. I've got to put 
the Turbo S in front and there's a little bit of overlap with the front bumper of the race car. The race car is about 13 feet, five inches uh, bumper to bumper. And then my Turbo S is about 12 feet, six inches bumper to bumper. Like I said, we've only got true 26 feet inside of here. And I did have to buy a little small donut tires off a of Razor 100 to get them to fit, but they will work with front donut tires on both vehicles. So miraculously it worked. Like I said, the height isn't really an issue. All of our stuff fits in and basically we could put an X3 in here, all that. So yes, and the, to do it all over again, I'd probably get a 28 or maybe a 30 footer. I thought the 26 was perfect. I didn't really think I'd have two complete side-by-sides that are four seat in length. And you know how it is guys, you kind of, if you're short-sighted, it can always come back to bite you because these toys are only gonna get bigger. You're probably only gonna accumulate more toys as life goes on and then result the need of a new truck, a new trailer, so on and so forth. So luckily it's worked out. Um, and moving on, this comes, as you see it here, the walls were all set up other than the flooring was bare. So after we did have to remove the front cabinet, we still have the upper cabinet here, which has some nice storage. And we do have a plug in here. So I can plug in, we've got lights and we've got power. Speaking of which, uh, one of the first purchases I made was purchase a Honda generator. EU 3000, I literally picked it up off Amazon. They shipped it to my front door. And I wanted to have something a little bit bigger than a 2000. I wanted a Honda because Honda generators are awesome. They're very quiet. They're basically the best. We'd use this forever. And we could run an AC unit off this if we wanted to. We could power a, uh, a toy hauler for the weekend, if you will. So 2000 bucks, like I said, not cheap, but as it goes to building this whole setup and getting stuff for us, we had this in a jam. If we didn't have power um, at a trade show, those type of things, it's great to always have your own power source, especially a Honda where it sips gas and it's quiet. It doesn't get in anybody's way. So up here we have a little bit extra storage. Um, we've got some stuff here for racing. We have to have extra fire extinguishers, safety vests when we go racing, of course, a map for doing oil changes. Uh, sleeping bags, of course, can fit up here, anything that you might imagine. And we've got the battery here that plugs in, so this works with, which used to be behind the, uh, the lower cabinet. So we got the space, we can put the cabinet back in when uh, I sell one or both of these vehicles and move on to new vehicles. I think maybe if the future of Chupacabra looks like a two seat X3 and a four seat speed, they might both fit with the cabinet put back in. So. We'll see. So moving on, uh, other upgrades. Now, I mentioned having power for air conditioning. Initially, we were gonna install an overhead AC unit that would pop into the vent here. I'm doing a little bit of research, a little bit of crunch time. We had a upcoming sand show and it was gonna be hot. I wanted to make sure we had something to keep our team cool. We used this trailer stock full of inventory, which we were selling out of and I splurged and got the little bit bigger 14,000 BTU. This is a Black & Decker. It's about 340 bucks. We'll post a link in the description. So this thing really saved our tail at Sand Show. Um, we had a little bit of a cool reprieve. What you got is a vent hose that needs to be uh, hooked up to an outdoor surface because as it puts cool air in, it's got to suck it and it exhaust the hot air. So you don't even have to put water in it. All you have to do is plug it in. It has a breaker if you have a power surge. Got a remote control. It's awesome. We can move it all around now. So for those few trips, late spring, early fall, you know, wherever we go, I mean, we pretty much off-road all year round. It's nice to have if we needed to camp out of it or is it unseasonably warm trip? Because as you, we all know, we can all plan for the best, but sometimes these trips end up being a lot hotter or a lot colder than we anticipate. So I mentioned power, I mentioned air conditioning. Now we've got something that we can really camp out of. And I used to own an RV and it really didn't work out for us not having a place to put it. We lived in a track home. Our kids are really small and it was really difficult to take them camping. So we got rid of the RV for now, but my thought was with a trailer like this, we can outfit it. I've got a little buddy heater. I can do some guys trips and I can really camp out of this thing for two to three, maybe even four day trips. My buddy was nice enough to hook me up with one of these weekend warrior leftover beds. It doesn't inhibit our ability to put our vehicles in it. And of course we put them over here on the passenger side. So that way crawling out of the car wasn't an issue. And we've got a nice little seating area, which we also use at the sand show. Um, it was really nice. This is great for when we're camping, you know, we'll have a little fold out table. We can work on content, of course, like we always do when we're out in the desert. We can make a bed out of it. I also have a cot. One of my, a couple of my buddies are big in uh, off-roading the moto scene, mountain bike scene. They've got some set up sprinters. So 
One of them told me, hey, get a big comfortable cot, you'll love it, so I did. And then another buddy told me about a little pool heated um, shower setup where you can get 10 gallons of water that stays warm no matter what. So probably gonna invest in one of those. I can go a couple days without a shower, but it would be nice to have 10 gallons, like me, maybe me and a buddy could each get a shower and of course feel like a brand new man after a long day of off-roading. So after getting all this stuff set up along with the installation, which was done by Brent at American Engineering, Brent also uh, ended up doing the flooring for us. So this is some rubber coin stuff. You can buy a big sheet of this as you need off Amazon, we'll post a link. I wanna say it was about 550 bucks for a 30-ish foot roll. We didn't have enough left over to do the drop down uh, rear door here. So we ended up using some Herculiner. I've used this stuff in the past. Um, it's inexpensive. It's really kind of a budget thing where I would've had to spend an extra 600 bucks to get a big enough sheet of rubber to cover this. So we went ahead, uh, Brent did that. It turned out really nice. It protects the wood, protects scuffs, all that type of thing and works good enough for what we need. So speaking of flooring and speaking of all the toys and getting all the toys to our spot, we installed some more E-Track. And the, the thought was of course to have more positions to mount up one or two different vehicles. Along the back, we've got a strip going sideways, which is usually where the generator might stay, tools, things of that nature. Now for the front here, we did some E-Track across here. Cause as you guys know, I'm a two wheel guy myself, um, dirt bikes, e-bikes, mountain bikes, kids toys. We have a couple motorcycle uh, front shocks. They pop right in and we can add two or three or four. So, you know, I've been down to film the Baja 1000, the Tommy Wash. I thought, what if we fit a Razor in three or four bikes? We can do that. Uh, what if we took this to Sedona? I'm not gonna go to Sedona without bringing my bicycles and the Razor. Kind of got a layout where I think with one side by side, we can fit almost all the bikes as well as some of the kids toys. Sand Hollow, Utah, a lot of places I like to go where there's more than just off-roading. There's just everything for two wheel, um, sand, rocks, dirt, Moab, all that type of stuff. So if you guys follow the channel, you guys know we love going everywhere and you know I love uh, having fun on the dirt and all these type of things. So that was really important that we had to set up. The motorcycle wheel chocks will work of course for the e-mountain bike, which is heavy as well as my regular mountain bike, so it's not laid over. I know that it's safe. Really, we have a setup here that works in almost any conditions. When we're at a race, we're probably just gonna have the race car in here with all of our tools, our spare parts, uh, everything that we would need. We've got an extra lighting in case we're doing a pit stop at night. The generator, of course, even the AC unit if the pit wants to stay cool if we're, uh, we're at a really hot race. At a trade show, this worked really well. Uh, as we grow, we're gonna double our skew count and beyond. It might not be enough room, but it worked really well for our current um, product offering to sell products out of. We had a little bit of everything, clothing, and it worked um, for almost everything we had. We had enough stock, we thought, for the sand show had it gone to full base. A lot of other trips, it works well, like I said, two side-by-sides. Uh, we've had both the Tube Turbo Twins in here in my car and Andrew's car. You can leave both the 33s on here. They both fit uh, comfortably without too tight of a, a gap, again, with the front cabinet removed. And like I said, I can put it back in as we maybe graduate or gravitate towards smaller cars in the future, we'll see. So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, the trailers worked out really well. I uh, haven't had any flat tires yet, anything of that nature. The only issue I really had is the landing gear on the front is a little flimsy. It's sort of tweaked and bent. Now I have had to use this as storage in the process of a move I recently went through. And when this thing's really loaded down, when you have the landing gear down, it puts a lot of weight on the front end and it starts to tweak it. So I replaced it once. Again, this, the second one has a little bit of a bend. So if you guys have any tips, comment below, help me out. I need some landing gear that's beefier and is not gonna bend when I do have to unweight the front of this thing when the trailer's loaded down with, with toys. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys like the content. I know a lot of you guys have a similar setup. Hopefully this gives you some peace of mind mind if you're looking to build something similar. Like you said, once you get down the rabbit hole of off-roading, you're only gonna probably accumulate more toys. Those toys are always gonna get bigger and more of them. And I can't wait to really take this thing on a quick little two-day guys trip, call up Brent from American Engineering. Hey, let's go ride some single track on the dirt bikes and we'll bring a, a Razor for some night rides. Or, hey, let's take this thing to Moab. We gotta bring all the two-wheelers and a side-by-side -side or maybe two Razors and then load the back of the trailer full of bikes. So, gotta get all your stuff there. We like going all over the place. I uh, hope you guys like this video. If you do, please like and subscribe. Check out our products if you wanna learn more, which is chupacabraoffroad.com. I will see you on the next one. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Like and subscribe for more content.